This question is from Michael and it says, Jesus says that we are to believe and be baptized for the remission of sins. Your statement of faith doesn't mention baptism, your thoughts. My first thought to this one is, I thought it did mention baptism, but you're right. I've just been onto the website and it doesn't. So this is news to me and I'll have to tweak the website going forward. But anyway, if you're new to Christianity, there's a debate going on here, which I think is being alluded to in this question. So I'll just briefly explain what that debate is. On the one side, there are lots of Bible verses, and it's a core belief of Christianity, actually, that the only way to salvation is by grace alone through faith alone. These are just a small selection. There's actually many, many more. I won't read them all out, but I'll just use this one example, Romans 10, 9, which says, just declare openly that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart and you will be saved. All you need is belief. Now, on the other side of this debate, there are some Bible verses that seem to tag baptism in there as a requirement as well, belief and baptism, like Mark 16, 16, for example, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. The one that Michael quoted as well seems to suggest that baptism is needed for the remission or the forgiveness of sins. So the debate is, do you just have to openly declare and believe in your heart as Romans 10, 9, or is baptism required as well as Mark 16, 16? Because some verses seem to suggest that it's needed and then others don't mention it at all. I'm glad this question's come up actually because I had a thought I wanted to share about this a long time ago. Then I completely forgot about it, which isn't unknown for me. But now this question's come in, it's really jogged my memory and I thought, oh yeah, there was something I wanted to talk about with this. So I'm really excited to get into this subject now. And I think this debate can be solved with a relatively simple key. And this is what's exciting about it. And I think it's a really interesting key because if we take this key and apply it, it really changes quite a lot about how we do church, I think, going forward. So I'll explain what this key is and then you can see what you think and what you make of it. First of all, let's make it clear that the Bible does inextricably link belief and baptism. Let's run through some of these verses. Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the one that Michael quoted. It was actually Peter saying it, but it doesn't matter because all the Bible is inspired. It's all coming from God. Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. What are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized. Have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. So the Bible tells us that belief and baptism are inextricably linked. Turn to God and be baptized. Make disciples and baptize them. Call in the name of the Lord and be baptized. Believe and be baptized. Those who believed were baptized. And there's something else that should be coming through in those verses, especially that last one. And this is the simple key, I think, which is that baptism is supposed to be an instant, outward, tangible expression of intangible inner faith. In other words, the moment that you express faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the very next moment you should be expressing that faith by finding a body of water and getting in there to be baptized. Baptism is how we express our yes if I can put it like that. In that last verse, 3,000 people believed. So they were baptized when? That very day. Remember the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch as well. Philip's walking south from Jerusalem when he sees a carriage on the road. He goes over and speaks to the man inside. Turns out he's a very important man. He's the treasurer for the queen of Ethiopia. The Ethiopian hears the gospel and he puts his faith in Jesus. And then the Bible says, as they rode along, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop and they went down into the water and Philip baptized him. So the Ethiopian heard the gospel. He believed. And so he expresses that yes by finding the nearest lake or river, whatever it may have been. And he gets in there. Belief expressing it by baptism. You believe right. Where's the nearest body of water? Let's get you in there and let's get you baptized. Now, we've changed this in the modern church, and I think this is therefore where some of the confusion and the debate begins to creep in. You see, we've separated out belief and baptism into two very separate, distinct events. And because we've separated them out, they've come to signify very different things in our minds. In the modern psyche, we tend to think of belief as being step number one, but then baptism, which is step number two, well, that may not happen for months or even years further down the line. And step number two, I baptism, 
that's come to signify when we feel like we're really ready to commit. That's when we feel like we're ready to go deeper in our faith journey with Jesus. And so we kind of build up baptism as this big occasion in our heads, almost like a graduation ceremony. And we ask, am I ready to be baptized yet? I don't know if I'm ready to take that next step in my faith journey. That's a big step. Am I there yet? Do I feel mature enough? in my Christian walk? Do I feel like I know enough? Have I got enough knowledge to be baptized yet? Maybe we've got to wait for our church to put on a baptism service and that could be months away. Maybe the church makes you take a baptism course ahead of time and that could last for weeks or months. And it will be presented to you in that course as, are you ready for this next big step in your faith journey with Jesus? But the Bible's like, it's not a next step that happens years down the line. It's the same step and it happens on the very day you believe. Baptism is how you express your belief. Baptism is the tangible and symbolic expression of that decision to put your faith in Jesus. 3,000 people believed when they heard Peter's sermon. So how many were baptized that day? 3,000, all of them. The idea of being a Christian but putting off baptism until further down the line, when you feel like you're ready to graduate or feel more mature, that was just unknown to the New Testament writers. They wouldn't have known what you were talking about. In the New Testament era, if somebody was walking around calling themselves a Christian, then by default, they'd express their belief by passing through the waters. Belief in baptism, not two separate steps, they were the same step, which is why you see the two inextricably linked in the Bible. Turn to God and be baptized. Make disciples and baptize them. Call in the name of the Lord and be baptized. Believe and be baptized. Believe and be baptized because baptism is how you express that belief. Sorry for repeating myself so often. It's how you express your yes to God. I've been trying to think of a good analogy for this and uh, I'm not sure if this is a good one, but it's the best one I've been able to come up with. Saying believe and be baptized is like saying get married and exchange rings. Those are not two distinct events which are happening years apart from one another. Nobody's saying, nobody's getting married and then saying, but I don't know if I'm ready to go to the ring stage yet. I don't know, maybe when I feel more mature or maybe when I feel like I know more about marriage, then I'll be able to get to the stage of exchanging rings. No, the exchanging of rings is the instant tangible outward expression of that intangible spiritual union that we call marriage. If you've gotten married, then almost by default, you'll have a ring on your finger because that's how you've expressed your yes to your partner. That's the outward expression of that yes. And if you're calling yourselves a Christian, then by default, you should have been baptized because that's how you express your yes to God. I hope that's making sense. And you can see how putting them together, belief and baptism back together, then solves a lot of the confusion and the debates. Because we separated these things out, we now have all of these people who call themselves Christian because they've taken the first step, but then they've not been baptized. So they're in this kind of no man's land. And that's what then leads to all these questions. Okay, so they've given their life to Jesus, but they're not baptized yet. So are they saved yet? I mean, they've taken the first step, but they've not taken the second step. Do they need to take the second step? But you solve this by putting belief in baptism back together where they belong. The Bible often tags baptism into verses about salvation because it assumes that if you believed, then you've also been baptized that very day. Actually, again, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but let me stay on this for just a second longer because it's very, very important. It is faith alone that saves. Remember the thief who died next to Jesus on the cross. He said to Jesus, remember me when you enter your kingdom. And Jesus said, I tell you this very day, you will be with me in paradise. So that thief did not have the chance to express his faith through baptism. All he could do was express it with his mouth and yet he was saved. So it is faith alone that saves. And therefore all of these Bible verses are absolutely correct. It's faith alone through grace alone. But under any normal circumstance, anyone who believes should have expressed their faith that very day through baptism which is why you often get baptism tagged into these verses as well. So this is why I said this has quite far reaching consequences for how we do church, because this means no longer treating baptism as a graduation ceremony, not delaying it until you feel mature. The Ethiopian eunuch only knew what he'd heard within the past hour or so from Philip and the 3000 only knew what they'd heard that day from Peter. So it means scrapping baptism classes and making people do membership classes ahead of time. We don't even need to insist that people take a week to prepare a testimony beforehand. Now, personally, I quite enjoy a baptism testimony. I love a baptism testimony, but that's not what it's about. The moment that someone believes upon Jesus, a Christian should be going with them to the nearest body of water and getting in there with them that very day to baptize them. 
I hope this is all making sense. I hope you see how it solves the debates that go on around this. The Bible occasionally tags baptism into the verses about salvation because there's an assumption that the two have gone together. If you believe, then baptism has happened as well. It just will have. There's no ordinary circumstances where someone should be a Christian and not have been baptized that very moment. I was talking recently about how it's possible to follow denominational traditions and by doing so we slightly deviate and lose sight of what the Bible actually says on a subject. And this is one of those examples where we now do baptism in a slightly different way from what the Bible actually presents us with. But because we're following our tradition rather than the Bible, we've slightly lost the meaning of baptism. We've slightly changed what it represents, what it signifies, and it's caused a bit of confusion and debate. So. I guess this is really a call for reform within the church. Let's realign with the Bible on this topic and let's start baptizing people the very moment that they believe. I'm not having a go at anybody about this, by the way, because I delayed baptism for years. It's just the way that it was presented in many churches. And before I came to this understanding, I just thought that's how it was. But we need to get back to the Bible on this. And so if you are a Christian, but you've not yet been baptized, this is your call to go and get baptized this very day or as quickly as you can find other Christians to do it. Get on the phone to somebody, to the nearest Christian you know, and go be baptized. And send me a video if you do, because I love watching it as well.